excuse me, what greater joy to me is one of my favorite things that B.J. Palmer <clears throat> talks about uh, in all his green books. This is from one of his last green books, The Glory of Going On. And I want to tell you <clears throat> about two greater joys that I experienced this particular week um, with patience because it really illustrates a lot of what we're going to talk about. But first of all, I just want to see how many of you guys have read this book, The Polyvagal Theory, have you even heard of it? Anybody? No? Okay. This should be required reading in the school. Um, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. <coughs> um, so, <coughs> when I used to deal with kids on the spectrum, I could never quite understand why they, we could not interact in the same way I could with a, a, a neurotypical child. It didn't make any sense to me. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know how to communicate with them. I didn't know how to reach them. My early days, when I first started meeting them, right after I graduated uh, from life, and Dr. Webster was telling me, who was, he was the teacher here of this class, um, he would say, yeah, you really got to learn how to deal with these kids on the spectrum because there's going to be more and more and more of them. And I completely did not understand how to kind of relate to them. And the reason is because this thing, this book, the polyvagal theory hadn't come out yet, so they, nobody had really elucidated what's going on. So in anatomy, what are you taught on the two parts of the autonomic nervous system? What are the two parts? Sympathetic and parasympathetic. So and how, do they, how do they work together? They balance each other out like this, right? So parasympathetic on, sympathetic on, and vice versa like this. So, and that's, that's what I was taught, and that's what everybody's still being taught today. But in the book, The Polyvagal Theory, by Dr. Stephen Porges, he came up with this amazing theory that helped for me to explain why I heard I had so much trouble dealing with this initially with these kids in the spectrum. Because what he found in his dissection, in his research, the quadrant variability, and a bunch of other things, he found that the autonomic nervous system actually doesn't have two pieces, it has three. There's a third piece called the social engagement piece, and it's all related to the vagus nerve. And the social engagement piece in kids on the spectrum does not work the same way as your and my social pieces do. Because I look in someone's eyes and they look at me. I talk to that person and they talk to me. I do something with that person and we do it together, and there's this sort of social communication kind of union that takes place. Well, I didn't know that until I started understanding this kind of stuff. Now, here's a perfect example. This little uh, ch uh, child, a girl, the mom calls me up and says, I want to be my kid, but she is super defiant. She doesn't do anything that she says. She won't look you in the eye. She won't talk to you. She's just, but, but I, I know we got to do something. Whatever we're doing already, the ABA stuff that we're doing, and all the things we're doing is not working. We've got to do something else. But are you going to be okay with that? Right? Because you're not going to get, like, your exam done. You're not going to get used to it. It's going to take a long time. Everything's going to take a lot longer with her because she's just so combative. Um, and I said, I, this is not a problem. I've been dealing with this forever. Uh, just now I understand this polyvagal theory. I said, just bring her in. Because what the polyvagal theory teaches is that the first thing you have to do in kids like this is build trust. Safety first. You have to, what the polyvagal theory shows is that the, your, your brains are constantly looking, is this safe? Is this safe? Like a radar, is this safe? And if, some, if this child, their vagus nerve isn't working right, then they perceive lack of safety 100% of the time. That's their, first, that's their default, is lack of safety. So this child comes in, and she's powering behind her mom. And she has, wants nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my intern, right? She's, she can talk, which is great. Uh, but she's completely, like, not there, not looking, not paying attention. And one of the things that I've found is that kids on the spectrum, they can sometimes relate to you if you start using other objects to relate as an in-between, go-between between you and that person. So <clears throat> one thing that I have found, I get rid of all the toys in my office that were the typical toys. I don't have typical toys in my office like you know, Superman or you know, uh, Princess Leia or Frozen, you know, those two and all that kind of stuff. I got rid of all that stuff a long time ago. And now I have sensory specific toys for the kids. Things that 
that, that what you should be engaged in that and more than just looking at them and playing with them like this. I want that to be something that you can engage. So we got these worm things. So I pull out of my pocket these worm things for her. And I said, you want to play with these? And they're like really squiggly looking and sticky looking and different colors and stuff. So she starts playing with it and she starts saying, these are snakes. And these snakes, uh, they want to they're going to keep you away from me. I don't care, that's cool, right? So, and so I'm like, well, how, how about I play with the snakes? And then we just create this little game. And it is amazing watching her transform because I am honoring her little polyvagal issue, her social engagement. She needs to have something else to engage with. And we just had this amazing connection and we just started playing together. And I did part of my exam as much as I could because she didn't have, she wouldn't have certain things. But we did as much of the exam as I could. And I met my mentor, Mark Rivera Hill, as part of how we see how the Vegas Nerve is doing. And I was able to do that. We tried to put the, the clip on her ear, she just wouldn't have it. It's okay, look at it. It's no problem. We'll just do it next time. So, um, now listen. So I, I, and that's what we just did for her first adjustment. So I adjusted her, and I did stuff very gently, sitting on mommy's lap, just very, just holding, little sustained contact adjustment, doing some total work, etc. But her seated, not lying face down. Face down is danger. Do you guys get that? Do you see how that would be dangerous to a kid on the spectrum to lie face down and remove all visual contact? No way, right? So you can't get it to do that without holding them down. So we just seated, seated up, seated up, no problem. So I adjust her, and I'm all, and we show the mom the exercise while she was doing all moment. She's totally there, totally with me, talking with me, playing with the snakes. But now instead of the snakes protecting me, what are the snakes doing? The snakes are now playing with me. Oh, the snakes like Dr. Lee. The snakes are going to play with Dr. Lee. The snakes are going to kickle Dr. Lee. What a difference then that the snakes are protecting me from you, right? Because what we have done is we created a safe space for this young lady. <clears throat> so well, I'm about to leave. And after talking to you guys with Rick, I thought she was going to high five, which I was very excited about. And she says, Dr. Lee, you forgot something. And I said, what? She said, you forgot the ear test. And I, and I, said, I, I said, I, I was just not going to bother with it. it that, I needed it so well that day, yesterday. I was like, I'm not going to bother with it. She said, you forgot the ear test. I was like, wow. Right, by understanding this, right, understanding how their minds work, in one visit, we were able to shift her fear and her anxiety and her stress and her tension into everything is okay and Dr. Ruben is a safe person. Right? And that's what the body theory teaches us, is how this works. Right? Here's another example. <coughs> so I have a pregnant mama and she's having her second baby and her first baby was like just horrible pregnancy, pain all the time, Constantly, like, you know, what, I mean, by the end, she said she was having such bad side pain, she could hardly walk for her birth. It was a really long uh, birth, and even though know, she was able to, to uh, avoid a C section, which is a very challenged birth, right? <clears throat> Adjustments. Even if you, even if all you're doing is working on atlas and sacrum, right, you're already touching through the atlas, you're already getting to the vagus nerve. Right, because the vagus nerve travels right into the atlas before it goes deeper into the neck. So just through adjustments, she had like this calm pregnancy with no problems. Like all her friends were having second babies, like, oh my god, the first one is going to have a cakewalk compared to this one. She's having like, no problems. She's sitting cross-legged on the floor, right, at 39 weeks, talking with me. Cross-legged on the floor, saying, I can't believe like how liberating my mom who just came in, said, like, you're doing too much, you're doing too much. She said, no, I feel good, I feel really good. She just had a baby yesterday, two hours. Two hours, no problem, hey! It's because we turn on the base and we calm the system down, right? I encourage her throughout her whole pregnancy, you can do this, you got this, you're strong, you're capable, that's the whole idea, is creating a safe space for our patients, right? And that's the whole basis of what the polyvagal theory is all about. <clears throat> Why this book, I think you really should be required reading for every chiropractic student, every chiropractor. And I am <clears throat> proud to announce that <clears throat> I am speaking with Dr. Stephen Porges, the author, 
in April. This just this breaking news just happened. So this is what the website looks like, and here is about the course. Here with myself and Dr. Porges. I'm speaking with Dr. Porges about how we can create a polyvagal informed pediatric chiropractor. Right? So I am super stoked to be involved with this. And to me, this is like the, the extension of brain based chiropractic. Right? You've got this is why it's so important to me to, for chiropractic to understand what our real roots are, right? Amy Conner said we're founded in tone. The polyvagal theory is talking about the tone of the vagus nerve. We as chiropractors have a direct connection to the vagus nerve. Number one, through how we interact with people, and number two is actually how we work with people. Right? Because someone who is someone who is just like a not to adjust, but someone who's a therapist talking to any calm them down, you teach them meditation, these you should be breathing, and humming. And exercise and yoga, all those things certainly will help, you know, affect the vagus nerve. But we touch the vagus nerve. And I'm not saying we should use transcranial stimulation. I know that there's some people that who talk about let's actually get the vagus nerve and use transcranial stimulation and implant things. I'm just adjust them. Right? We adjust their atlas, we adjust we adjust their 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 cranium, and we're affecting their vagus nerve directly. Right, so you create a safe space in your environment, <clears throat> like I did for this little girl that was pregnant one month. And then when I was a little a child, I put my hands on her atlas. I adjusted her to stay contact. I put my hands, hands on her temporal bone to work on her, her cranial nerves. What a change that we can see, right? And that's why I want to start teaching this. So Dr. Porges and I will be doing this. If you're interested, just let me know. I will send you the link. Uh, I'm super stoked <coughs> about this.